Hi, welcome to another Hat Chat. I hope everybody's doing well today. I'm Norma Shepard, director of the Mobile Millinery Museum. We're a traveling hat museum with a costume archive as well. We are Canada's Hat Museum. I'm also the uh, author of five books on vintage fashion, including 1,000 hats. Now we do have well over 1,000 hats in the archive. And as I say, every hat tells a story. The story I want to tell today are dating tips from 1937. So tips on dating vintage hats, that is. One of the best ways to date a hat and to get a greater understanding of it is by watching old movies. And there are some awesome movies. So the one I selected today is from 1937 and it's called Lady Behave. And um, there's some a lot of wonderful hats in this movie, but the ones I want to um, focus on are the ones with some cone-shaped crowns and what I would call adaptations of Tyrolean styles. Now, um, a true Tyrolean style is a high, uh, high-crowned hat, uh, usually with a crease in the center of the crown, an asymmetric uh, brim, maybe a small brim that'll turn up. Um, usually, it slants over the brow one way or another. Um, and often with a quill somewhere. So, I mean, that's the basic uh, structure, but I mean, there's a lot of variations that uh, can be done for that. And like so many classic styles, they're often of a time, but also are classics that can be done again and again in different fashion decades with, um, you know, with some adaptations. So I pulled a few little hats from the archives today and they're from a hat haul that uh, it's kind of random and have not been, uh, what would I say, um, not archived yet. And also uh, a couple of them haven't been uh, cleaned and, and steamed, etc. But we're just going for shape and general silhouette today. So I want to start with a piece. And by the way, I will mark the timestamps uh, where you see these hats in the movie Lady Behave uh, in the description box. So starting off. Uh, here's a basic, very basic hat from the 1930s. It has sort of the basic Tyronia, Tyrolean uh, crown shape. Please ignore the um, feathers. This hat has come to us in rough shape, of course, but it still has some charm and a lot of, uh, a lot of things to teach us about hats. So this is a, a, a fur felt hat from the 30s. Of course, if you think about the 1930s in regard to fashion, it was during the Depression. Certainly not as affluent an era as the uh, decade that preceded it, the 1920s with all the glitz and glamour and, and fabulous styles. 30s were fabulous in their own way, uh, much sleeker silhouette, and these hats were designed to coordinate with them. Uh, the high crown draws the eye upward and uh, gives a long slim appearance and um, very neat and tidy not not a lot of huge brims but some of the hats with the big brims were often tilted but that's not quite what we're talking about today you can see that the brim on this is very narrow and actually close inspection tells me that this was um, glued over top of the crown not probably the most professional way to um, attach a crown and a brim but again we're talking about the 1930s a lot of it wasn't a lot of um, time meant money if you put a lot of time into making fashion of course um, then the cost would go up and also uh, there wasn't a lot of fancy trims but you can still create a great look with a hat like this as i turn it you can see that the crown you know if you took a piece of paper and and, and uh, rolled it into a cone shape you would have a more precise shape than what you see in this um crown uh there's you know it's kind of rounded here and longer than it is as you turn the hat and and see it at the back so what do we know about it we know it's got a chignon strap a very simple elastic but beyond that again the feathers are a bit of a mess who knows what this hat has been through but it may not have been a very pricey hat originally I don't see a label that's not always a tell but um, you can see that um, the feathers have been glued on and uh, rather poorly but still great style and this is why it's important to look at the movies because you will see how um, a hat of this shape would really um, be, a, be a wow and an old hat like this if you're out in the wild and you, you're recreating some vintage styles maybe you're a uh, you know a, a history bounder or you want to recreate um, 
a period look and um, hats of course exemplify each each period look so you can uh, you can have a look at this and try and imagine it without the feathers but how this was worn would be tilted over the brow even if the brim turns up a bit you know it's going to give this this slant effect and um, another style from that era that would give a slant effect was the slouch hat think uh, Greta Garbo anyway the first hat that I, I refer to in the film is um, it's very plain it's not adorned with feathers like this and I believe that um, there's a there's a few views but mostly a side view you get a really good look at the hat and um, and see that the actress is wearing it over the brow so as we move along uh, there is now I don't know I've forgotten whether it's the same actress or not but there's another great style uh, with a cone shaped crown it's a variation again on the Tyrolean but it's quite different in that instead of having the the brim you know uh, come dramatically over the brow this brim or the crown and the it's an upturned brim but the hat begins here at the top of the um, forehead and goes back into a cone shape now the example I'm going to show you is very similar uh, in effect but this is not from the 30s um, this we know of course there's a lot of things that can help date a, a hat and one of the first things we see is this hat pin this is a, um, a little later this uh, lovely hat pin that uh, fastens you just kind of skewer it right through the hat and then it, it uh, attaches together and but this so this is a little bit later this is probably late 40s maybe 1950 and um, it is a fur uh, fell it's a <laughs> it's a faux fur is what I'm trying to say and the trim is very simple with grow grain ribbons so in that way it's rather key in keeping with uh, the hats we're looking at um, circa 19 37 again you might wonder what you see this trim here you might think oh this should be in the front the brim is upturned at the back but that's not how it's worn uh, many people come to me and say you know oh this why were the hats so small back then back then um, it wasn't always the case it's just that you might come across a nice old hat and assume incorrectly that it's worn a certain way and then it would seem very small so uh, one of the ways to um, identify how you should wear your hat is to look inside for the label this one does not have a label but it does have the telltale um, seam where the band meets in the center back same thing on the brim okay so you line that up and that goes at the back so once you do that then you can see how the hat was designed to be worn and try the, trying them on also is a clue to their age so see how now this you see when it's worn like this and begins at the top of the forehead then the cone shape goes this way and you can see that the trim is off to the side and not not pr predominantly in the front so um, the hat that is similar to this in the film it's, it's quite a charming piece it, it appears as if it's a felt and the brim turns up and there is a rectangular piece of fur and then a little remnant of felt bow on top of the fur so really very simply uh, adorned and that was often the case in the 30s during the depression uh, remnants of the felt that the hat might have been cut from could be used as a trim little bits remnants of fur as well they were very imaginative um, hat pins were used feathers were used as well um, another thing I want to say about knowing the correct way to wear the hat I'll just pop this back on I'll do my little Minnie Mouse thing here um, is <laughs> years ago a woman told me that um, she had gone to her Milner every new season to have new hats made and uh, but I think she skipped a season and she might have purchased a hat uh, in a department store so the following season uh, she put the hat on the hat from the previous season to go to the Milner and have new hats made and uh, she sat in the chair as you would if you went to a custom Milner there would be a mirror in front of you the Milner would stand behind you and she would remove your hat and then bring some selections for you to try even if you had seen something in the window or something you fancied you, you didn't touch them the Milner would do that for you so she removed the hat from her customer and looked at it and said 
is this how you wear your hat? Because it appears as if you've been wearing it backwards. So the uh, customer was quite surprised and the milliner showed her how it was meant to be worn and turning it around, it looked like a completely different hat. So the milliner lost a sale that day because this woman told me she decided, well, I'll just take this home and this will be my new hat for the season. So that's a little, uh, another little tip and trick on how, how to know just um, how to wear your hat. But you know, maybe, maybe you get lucky and you can turn a hat a different way and it looks great. But the problem is, um, in if you're getting a custom uh, millinery piece, this hat is not going to just look great in the mirror. It's going to look great from every angle. I mean, this is the skill of the uh, designer. They are artists. And um, I think that's a slight um, contribution to why hats fell out of fashion in the late 60s. There's a lot of reasons why they did. And primarily, um, it was because of the social imperatives around the wearing of a hat. But also that had a little bit to do with it. It was very democratic. You could purchase a hat at a department store. It would be less expensive. It would take less time. But maybe you pop it on and it looks great in the mirror to you, but you haven't put it on in front of a full length mirror to see how it goes whatever, with whatever it was you had planned to wear. Uh, how does it look on profile? How does it look from behind? So another thing to remember. The third hat that I've time stamped in the film, Lady Behave, uh, is, by the way, before I continue to the third one, I just wanted to remind you that we're talking about this one. This one is not from 1937, but I just uh, show it to you to talk about how some of them would start at the top of the forehead and go back. Now this one, this one is more of a typical Tyrolean. We have the, uh, let me just sign the center back. Yeah, I got the center back. So you can see the sloping brim. There's a lot of ways to do this. This, um, certainly if you were do making one in felt, you would you could shape it on a similarly shaped hat block. Uh, but this was done in fabric and I wouldn't think that this is a very expensive fabric. Um, the velvet, however, is quite high quality, the velvet band, and very likely this custom hat was made to go with a coat. Might have been a velvet evening coat, it might have been a winter coat of this fabric, not too sure, but we can guess about that. So um, again, the sloping brim, a uh, sloping crown, uh, once you tilt the brim, it slopes even more, and very typical uh, of that era were trims very small, even if, though they be, might be feathers. So. Um, I will timestamp the one that resembles this one. And this one was custom made Roland de Roche. It is a Montreal label. There are some great hats in this movie. They're not all Tyroleans. Um, so it's worth, you know, if you've got some time and you enjoy oh, vintage fashion, have a good look at the at the whole film. It's it's there's some wonderful hats in there. And um, just in keeping with what I said about the inexpensive materials that might have been used for hats in the 30s. They were very imaginative. There is a hat further on that is pieced from different fabrics. It's, um, of course, it's, it wasn't a color film. It's a black and white film, but you can, you can see that, uh, you know, you get a sense of how it might have been colored. And the trimmings are simply uh, ribbon. Quality does count when you're purchasing a hat. Uh, when I was researching my book, A Thousand Hats, I spoke to so many women who told me great, lovely, wonderful, happy hat stories. But there were a few sad hat stories as well. One woman told me that she purchased a hat to wear um, to a funeral. And I guess she had purchased an inexpensive department store piece. And at the graveside, it started to rain and the flowers just fell right off her hat. They must have been, you know, poorly glued on. So um, that's something to remember too, if you're purchasing a new hat. Uh, a hat might at first glance create, you know, quite a bit of interest, but uh, look and see how it's made. Um, certainly if trims are glued on, that's not something that, that you really want. If you're out in the wild purchasing vintage hats and you like a piece for whatever reason, don't let that stop you. So uh, that's my little um, dating tips for today, circa 1937. I will do others. In fact, I think the next one I will do will be 1943 because uh, I found a good film where uh, Tyro Tyroleans of that year uh, were featured and they, 
there are some differences that you can point to because of course it was early in the second world war so you can point to differentiating that from early 1940s from late 1930s which um, if you're a collector and you can date a hat to a particular even just to date a hat to a decade consider yourself skilled but it's a lot more fun and a little trickier to pinpoint uh, closer to a date uh, keeping in mind of course that um, you know you want to consider did the costumer or the designer um, for the film uh, are the hats reflective of the era and style that was already in or um, were they recreating new a uh, brand new style through this film uh, generally speaking a hat in theatrical millinery whether that applies to stage or film will um, follow a certain style but it will also have some adaptations um, obviously for the particular actresses um, silhouette and face but also to help tell the story so those are fun elements to look for as well uh, if you're um, a vintage fashion hat lover as I am um, and you'd like to see more of this content or have particular questions please leave me a comment hit like if you've enjoyed this uh, hit subscribe and I will see you Mondays and Thursdays for more hat chat have a happy day